Hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice uh, to see all of you uh, coming to this um, uh, uh, Zoom meeting, uh, jointly organized by the Hong Kong Philatelic Society and the Hong Kong Study Circle, uh, supported by um, FIAP, uh, the Federation of Inter-Asia Philatelic. And um, uh, it, this, this meeting is uh, uh, really a, a continuation of the last meeting about the, um, the, the Hong Kong Postal slogans and government slogans. Um, a few presenters uh, didn't have time last, uh, last month. And well, obviously this is the first meeting of 2023. And uh, I think we have a, a quite a lot of themes being suggested by members last year. And uh, I think we, we should see some interesting discussion um, uh, in months to come. Uh, so um, I think, um, shall we just uh, first to kick off, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Ingo, who has uh, some interesting uh, stuff to share with us about uh, slogans, right? Ingo, is Thank you. you. All right, I will share the screen. Yeah. <clears throat> Can everybody see that? Yes. So what I'm uh, showing here is 16 slides of um, 1950s to 1970s uh, community messages as machine slogan cancellations. Um, I'm not covering the exhibition slogans that uh, changed every year. And I'm not doing correct addressing saves delay or post early for Christmas. Those are, are for another discussion or another member sometime. Uh, what I'm showing is messages that have community, um, community communications from the government. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'm just restricting it to the 1950s to the 70s. In the 50s, the first slogans came out for Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, through the 70s, there was quite a number of them. And then there was a pause. In the 1980s, there were no slogans. And then it resumed again in the 90s. And then in the uh, SAR period, there's a lot of slogans coming out. Uh, so I'm restricting it to those uh, early slogans up till the mid-70s. Uh, the first one I've got here is, uh, please become a blood donor with a telephone number. Um, this is a pretty common one. You do see it around quite a bit. It had a relatively long um, three-month uh, duration, and it had several variations of the slug, the, the Hong Kong A. There's also a B is known, and there's a, a Kowloon version of this cancellation. Um, I, one thing I read, I one of my... Uh, references. I have two references. Um, Hong Kong slogan cancels by the Chinese Philatelic Association and Hong Kong Post Office of 1993 and uh, the Proud Book of 2004. And um, the Hong Kong um, slogan cancels publication is a really good one in the sense that it gives a little bit of background to the use of these, uh, the issuance of these slogans. And um, what uh, it said about this one was that in the early 50s, um, there wasn't a lot of donations to blood banks. It was not a common practice in Hong Kong. Um, so uh, they tried to encourage that people start uh, donating blood to the blood bank. Um, here's an, an anachronistic one. Is your radio licensed? Um, it's incredible to think that up till 1964, um, you had to purchase a license every year. In, in 1956, the cost was $20. I don't know if it progressively got it more expensive, but um, in, in between February and March, they had this um, slogan, making sure people would uh, purchase their license to operate a radio. Um, there are a couple of different Hong Kong variations, and there is also a Kowloon version for this slogan. And um, what, uh, what made the licensing go away 
was the advent of transistor radios. If you remember in the 1960s, uh, transistor radios became very popular. And once they became widespread, they couldn't control having licenses anymore. So they just dropped it. Um, here's one that's a little bit scarce. Yeah. Have you actually seen the uh, radio license? Yes, I tried to buy one on eBay, but it was it was going expensive. I, really? I was outbid. Is it got a revenue stamp on? A fiscal stamp? No, the one I saw didn't have a revenue stamp. It, I think it should have, but it didn't. It was just a, like a little sheet of paper. It was like a form that was filled out. And I think it had a chop, but it didn't have a stamp that I remember. Mm, interesting. Yeah, okay. I, I would love to get one. Uh, they are around, uh, yes. but like I say, the one time I saw one, uh, <laughs> it went very expensive. And it was from the th uh, 30s or 40s. It wasn't from this era. No, no. Mm -hmm. That's probably why it, it went so expensive. Yeah. Do well, you okay. have one? No, never seen it. Yeah. Yeah. If you go on eBay into not stamps, but into... Uh, with something called scripophily. Uh -huh. um, they, they, that's all kinds of paper and ephemera. And, mm -hmm. and that's where you'd probably find one oh, if right. they have one. Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good point, though. It would be lovely to have one yeah, uh, to, have to one, show yeah. along with this. Yeah. I thought we would have had a fiscal stamp on because, I mean, <laughs> all of the documents, they, they had, uh, you have to pay, pay a, a revenue. Anyway. Yeah, you would think it would take a revenue stamp, but like I say, the one I saw didn't have one. No. All right, the next the next one is the uh, agricultural show in uh, Yunlong, um, 1961. This was a relatively short-lived uh, uh, slogan from 20th of January to 4th of February in 1961, so just like 12 days. And... Um, it's not super scarce. You do see it around sometimes, but it's always nice to get it commercially used. Mm. Um, and uh, there's a difference when you compare Proud and the Chinese Philatelic Association publication. I did I did that very thoroughly for all these cancels. There's uh, some disagreement. And in this case, uh, the 20th of January is stated in Proud. The CPA says it's the 21st of January is the earliest use so you know there there's no question that i mean the cpa book was published in 1993 so prouds is the more more uh, up-to-date one but you'll see later on that there's also some discrepancy where proud doesn't show something that's listed anyway so this is on the first day of use and um nice. what uh, the yun long uh, agricultural show was it was to promote farming in the in the new territories. Um, then we have technical training week, Star Ferry, twenty fifth to thirtieth of April. Um, it was very interesting to read uh, what the CPA wrote about this cancel. First of all, it was both with uh, uh, this Hong Kong Sea and also a Kowloon version. And uh, again, it was a relatively short period of uh, use from the 10th of uh, April to the 1st of May. Um, and um, it was a program to encourage youth to seek work uh, because apparently there was a lot of unemployed youth and they wanted to get people trained to, you know, uh, to, to do work uh, of various jobs. And uh, the Duke of Edinburgh sponsored that program. I, it was an interesting insight uh, that I gleaned from the Chinese Philatelic Association. Um, here's one that I didn't really know about till I came across this cover and was uh, studying for this presentation, uh, the opening of the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, it, um, Turns out it was a uh, an amalgamation of three smaller Chinese colleges or universities and uh, became uh, unified into one big Chinese university in uh, 1963. 
And um, there was a post office on site, and this was the slogan that they used. And uh, it was, uh, again, a pretty short period, eight days from the 16th of October to the 24th of October, 1963. It was quite scarce. Are you comfortable? Yes. Um, this one, uh, traffic safety. Uh, I love this one. I love the picture of the car on it. It's an old car that I, that I remember from my youth, that style of car. And um, it's talking about road safety. Um, in the 1950s, uh, Hong Kong started getting a lot of cars in it, although in those days it, it wasn't by far as much as it is now. But anyways, uh, they were starting to get concerned about uh, road safety and the government decided to encourage safe driving by using this slogan. Um, it came out in 1956 and was in used for a month. Uh, it had many versions and was reissued in 1964 and 65 um, with both Hong Kong and Kowloon uh, cancels. This is a Kowloon B. There's lots of variations of those uh, slugs. Uh, trying to collect all the different variations according to the CPA book is quite a challenge. I mean, I'm showing you pretty well everything I have, uh, minus a few duplicates, but um, I definitely don't have all the variations of Hong Kong A, B, C, and Kowloon and so on. There's a lot of scope for collecting in this area. And it's nice to get a commercial use of a, of a commemorative. Uh, British Week in Hong Kong. Um, you can argue that that might not be really sounding like a community message. It's more of a commercial message. But what it was, um, they wanted to promote the purchase of British products in Hong Kong, including by the locals and not just by the uh, British nationals. And again, the, the um, CPA book gave an interesting little side note that uh, during her royal visit, Princess Margaret officiated the opening of that, uh, of that, um, that event. And um, there is, this is the Kowloon version. There's also a Hong Kong version. And it was in effect for a bit longer. You see this one around a bit more because it was in for just about two months in 1966. Uh, here's another one that I really like. This is that 1967 tourism promotion year. Um, one thing that strikes me about this, they, they had it both in Hong Kong and Kowloon. Uh, the Kowloon one went a bit longer than the, um, than the Hong Kong one by a week or, well, by five days. But what I find interesting is you almost never see these on foreign covers. And you would think if they want to promote tourism, they would put it on the dollar thirty rate covers or you know covers going to foreign destinations. But ninety percent of the ones of these that I've seen um, are always local mail. Uh, by by that year, um, according to the CPA, uh, tourism had become the third most important income source for Hong Kong. Uh, here's another one that's a bit more on the commercial side, more so than a community message, but I think it still fits. Um, it's a cover going to New Zealand uh, with a printed matter rate of 15 cents um, with the slogan, um, buy Hong Kong products. And again, this was, an, uh, they were advocating local and people abroad to buy and use Hong Kong products. So uh, you could consider it a community message for people to be proud of the fact that Hong Kong produced a lot of stuff and they want them to support the, their industry. Um, it does come with a Hong Kong and Kowloon version and uh, was in effect for about uh, three weeks. So it's a bit lesser uh, period, but I've seen this one around more often. And, and as you can see, this is on an outgoing foreign cover. <clears throat> Festival of Hong Kong. So this one was also an interesting uh, learning from the CPA book uh, that 
in 19 this the the cover up there is 1969 it's a very faint date and the lower one is 1971 um this was um uh, they they initiated a festival the government did um because there was unrest there was social unrest in in the 1960s mid 60s and uh, they decided to put on a festival to let people have some joy and some pride in in their city and their country and um it it was an eye opener for me that the government would uh, would put on this community message to uh, get people to participate in the festival i thought you know festivals are a natural chinese event uh, but this one was more politically motivated uh, to let people forget about the social unrest that happened uh, in the previous years um there was a very uh there there was only a hong kong a kowloon usage in um 1969 and in 1971 they reissued it uh, i guess they held the festival annually uh, but for that one in 1971 it was only seven days it was only in effect for uh for seven days so that's a really scarce one yeah. the bottom one yeah. and you will see that i have some of these are just cutouts because again these are these things are not that prevalent i mean there, there must be a lot of them around but i think one thing that happened is people weren't really collecting slogans uh, that i know of in the in those times so a lot of this stuff would be just thrown out and uh, you're very lucky if you find one. Yeah. Uh, so now we're moving on to the cutouts more so than the covers. Support the community chest. Um, it had a lot of different uh, variations of that slogan. Uh, it went on for about two weeks and there was many uh, subsequent uses from the in the, in the 1970s. And this is the one that in 19, the 1970 Index D Hong Kong, it, first of all, that one is 13 days later than recorded in that 1993 book of the CPA. And Proud doesn't even list it. Mm. So I missed it, but I, I, I looked very thoroughly through Proud. It's not listed. So you missed that one. And um, it was meant to promote you know, local welfare organizations. Uh, I thought the community chest was one one uh, entity that did all the charity, but it wasn't. It was a it was an umbrella ent entity. I don't know if they still have a community chest. I would think they do. Yeah. But it's an umbrella organization for a lot of different yeah, local welfare. Yeah. Um, the bottom one uh, with the uh, Chinese writing is. Uh, raising awareness of the school of medical school medical services scheme so uh, according to the cpa um, this scheme was in effect already for some years but it was very underused less than five percent of students were getting medical services in the schools when after they had put up this whole program for it so they decided to issue a slogan to raise awareness um, it was in for a month uh, in in 1970 from uh, 15th of September to 15th of October and and it was reused uh, from 71 to 75 and there are um Kowloon versions uh proud again starts the first proud listing of this is in 1974 so proud missed some of the earlier ones of this too uh, this Herbco uh, slogan is uh, getting people to be aware of the workings of the Urban Council. Apparently, uh, according to the CPA book, um, people were not really aware of what the Urban Council did. They knew it was some kind of a monolithic uh, government, quasi-government organization, but they didn't know what it did. So they had a program on to uh, get people to realize, hey, these, this is supporting your living environment and, and doing all these good works for you. And they publicized it with that slogan in 1974. And it's a kind of short-lived one from 2nd of November to 14th, so 12 days. You don't see this one that much. Uh, may, I, may I just comment on the, on the, uh, the address? 
Um, sure. Yeah, um, it's actually addressed to the Hong Kong Philatelic Society. We still have the same PTPO box uh, till now. Um, the, the, the post of the exchange secretary is no longer there. Uh, we used to have a um, an exchange box where members contribute put stamps into uh, in, into a booklet and then uh, a, 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 and then sent uh, amongst members uh, locally. And uh, used to find a lot of um, uh, so interesting stamps and you know at, at great prices. But unfortunately, uh, I think it went out of fashion uh, in. The, um, I think it must be in the in the nine maybe in the nineties. I think it just went out, and and then we, we don't have the exchange packet anymore, which is a shame. I think a lot of the local uh, societies, um, uh, especially in the UK, probably in the in the US as well, they have, have an exchange box where members like to sell material. Um, it's, it's a it's a great idea, but um, but sadly we, we don't we don't have them anymore. Okay. Yeah. I can tell you the same thing happened in Canada. We had uh, the equivalent of an exchange packet uh, in uh, the Royal Philatelic Society and in, in different stamp societies and clubs. And it, it did go out of fashion. The, the, the ones where you get it by mail went out of fashion. Most of those societies are still selling stamps in one fashion or another, but the exchange packet program Definitely is uh, no longer uh, yeah. no longer viable for various reasons. Postage cost is one. Yeah. Insurance and losses is another. Yeah. And uh, just lack of volunteers. It's very hard to find volunteers, and these are labor intensive activities. So, yeah. Yeah. Engel yeah. Royal of Canada is still going on. The circuit is ongoing. As an exchange packet, not version? exchange, but. But it's all you you put it in a book, you send it in central location, and then it's still going on. And then yeah, you sell. I see. Well, as a oh, matter of fact, thing. yeah. So as a matter of fact, I think in, in the UK, um, that the study circle had a, a exchange packet too. Uh, that was they in did. The 70s, in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's gone. <laughs> Can you tell who the sender is? It's a bit hard to tell, and it looks like it's just a number. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's uh, <clears throat> it maybe the membership number. Uh, no, actually, Carlton Central PO Box three six four zero. I think it's just an address. Yeah. Yeah. No, no sender. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, good uh, feedback on that. Um, here's one that's very scarce because it was. Um, it was, uh, I, sorry, no, this is not the super scarce one. It, it, it has a relatively short period of use, but a little bit under a month. Uh, but made in Hong Kong, um, it was to promote local products and again, to, to foster pride in Hong Kong citizens of their um, manufacturing capability. And, and, you know, there was a time when, um, I remember in the early 50s and early 60s, made in Japan was sort of a label that made you think it was bad quality. It was cheap, but bad quality. And that changed over time when Japan raised their quality of their products to, um, to uh, very high levels and very expensive uh, things. And I think Hong Kong went through the same thing. Now, I, I don't ever remember made in Hong Kong being a derogatory uh, thing uh, in my youth, but definitely for people to be proud of the products that they, they make, um, it's, it's, this is a slogan to tell people, hey, if, if it's made in Hong Kong, it's from your blood, sweat and tears, and you should be proud of it. So um, I do consider that a community message, uh, although it's also probably a little bit of propaganda. Um, and this particular cover is the only one I have that is outside of the um, outside of the date ranges. This is one day earlier uh, than both uh, CPA and Proud. They listed as 17th, and this one is the 16th of March. Okay. 
Uh, and this is the last page showing a, a number of uh, just cutouts. Um, the top two are talking about drug addiction. Um, there were actually three versions of this talking about, uh, you know, drug addiction equals chronic suicide uh, or ruins your family. Uh, the first version, which I don't have a, an example of, although I've seen it in the books, is about uh, don't take uh, prescription drugs to, you know, it, to excess. Um, so I guess in the late 60s, they started worrying about drug usage, uh, recreational drug usage, and, uh, and the addictions that come with it. Um, and these were recorded with both Hong Kong and Kowloon versions uh, for three years between 68 and 71. Um, they had relatively long usage from 1st of May to 22nd of October, and you do see them around, but um, it's sometimes hard to de decipher them on, on covers, so it's, it's definitely a nice thing to find. And as you can see, I don't even have these with date slugs, I just have them as cut cutouts. I once uh, was lucky to acquire a, a whole envelope full of cutout slogans, and this is where this is from. Uh, the middle left one is uh, uh, in Chinese writing, anti-cholera injection. So they wanted to encourage people to get uh, in, uh, vaccinations uh, to save them from cholera outbreaks. And again, this was in uh, 68 and, and it went through to 70, uh, several Hong Kong and Kowloon versions. Uh, the next one on the right side is tr dealing with traffic safety, um, crossing safely uh, with a picture of a man crossing or walking. Um, it was uh, a police program that promoted road safety and the only this one has only a Kowloon version. Uh, it was a very short usage too, from the 19th of November to 24th, so five days. Um, I it's it's a pretty scarce one. Uh, Clean Hong Kong. There's a couple of versions of it in 1975, uh, from October 8th to 29. Uh, sorry, for in it's the. the the one on the left is from 1972, although this, this is the 75 version, but they had it for three years, uh, just promoting to clean up the city. Um, and on the last day of this one, 29th of January in 75, the new one came out with a new uh, version of the slogan and said clean 75 and had sort of figures uh, I don't know what they're supposed to be doing, but anyways, that's their idea to promote being clean. And that one was in with the logo. Yeah. And t shirt with the logo. Right. Yeah. They, they ah, okay, there you go. The government issued the t shirt with the logo. Or they ah, okay. A room and uh, uh, two tri triangular thing on each side. Yeah. 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 So and that was in effect for a month. So as you can see, some of these are uh, weren't used very long, and and they are rather hard to find. I mean, they're around. It's not like even ones that were only in effect for five days. I mean, in five days worth of mailing in Hong Kong, that still means there's hundreds of thousands, if not okay. millions, of these around. But like I say, they were probably not safe to any great extent. Yeah. So finding these things is uh, very, yeah. very much like finding a needle in a haystack. Sure, sure. So that's the end of my talk. I just uh, show the references uh, from the CPA book and the Proud. And I have to say a thank you to Lee Scamp, who mm -hmm. loaned me that CPA book, which is hard to find. I've, I've been trying to acquire one of my own, and uh, you can't find it. It's it's never on eBay. It's never on any of my other sources. And it's in, in the title of the book, in the first page, it says, Not for Sale. I don't know how they distributed it. <laughs> Oh, but no, it, was it, not it, was so actually, it was actually given out free uh, to the visitors at the uh, Hong Kong 94 stamp exhibition. Oh, was so it? That's why, oh, that's okay. why all of it gone, because everybody took one, and some people may not be collectors. They, they get chucked, thrown into the bin, and, and a lot, lot of wastage. Yeah, and, oh, and well, that explains it. Yeah, the, the pages are, e are very easy to fall out with age. 
you know, start all the pages start start coming off, and uh, uh, that there's a there's a problem with the binding as well. So um, yeah. I think a, a lot. I, I think I I don't know how many copies that the government printed, but uh, you know many of them were actually just chucked out. The same is, is the same story with, with our um, the, the original 1997 uh, journal number one of the Philatelic Society. It, it was it was given out free. Uh, at the '97 exhibition, and and a lot of people just just came and took one, and uh, then they, they, they're not maybe they they are just uh, uh, casual stamp collectors, and uh, they probably got lost and thrown away. So yeah, so the the number original <laughs> number one as uh, Hong Kong Philatelic Society journal is is very it's hard to find and it's, it's not money. I mean, you well, can't find it. That's not anyhow. Well, I'm glad you tell me that it's common that the pages come loose because oh, this yes. book, which I've had on loan from Lee for a long time, <laughs> the pages are really totally all oh, yeah, falling out. Yeah. So yeah. now I, I can I tell Lee, hey, this is not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's yeah. the glue they use. Uh, you know, yeah. I had to glue each page back in its place uh, with, with a yeah. brush, and then it, it, it took me a lot of work. And yeah, yeah. I, got, I got it rebound. <laughs> yeah, you had the rebound. Yeah. Wow, well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well but done. the information in there is invaluable. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Ingo, do, do okay. we have or well, did any study on the efficiency of the slogan? Did they yeah. change the course of behavior? Or did they really have an impact on the population? Uh huh. That's right. a good question. That would be something to study. Um, I, I do get um, papers uh, about the history of Hong Kong from an academia uh, website. And once in a while, they talk about those kind of things. But I never really thought to match up the information from those with, you know, the slogans like the social unrest. It is known. It's 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 a well-known thing. But I've never read any detailed history of it. So you're right. It, it would be a very interesting study to figure out um, whether those slogans had the impact that the government was hoping for. Well, one would you be the uh, easiest one, probably, is a blood donor. Uh, before the, uh, the slogan or after was an increase of donors. In, it may be some statistic on the blood uh, somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point, Philippe. Do you have any insight into that, uh, uh, Andrew? Uh, what the, yeah, I missed, I missed the question. What, what was, what was uh, the, Philippe was asking, what was the impact of these slogans? So, for example, with the encouragement for donating blood, did suddenly the blood donation volume go up yeah. once these things came out? I think you, you have you probably have to go into the local newspapers or the, or the government publication gazettes maybe uh, to to find out. Uh, yeah, probably some impact. Uh, uh, you know, especially clean Hong Kong. Um, it's it's I would say it's like an advertising slogan. It was it was, a, it was I remember. I'm quite old, dude. It was, old, yeah. it was a, a, a campaign mm. that uh, encouraged people to to dump the rubbish properly and uh, to clean the streets, etc. Um, well, certainly the the the, the um, well, the last time I talked about the the uh, exhibition, uh, Hong Kong products exhibitions, and that actually. It uh, uh, draw a lot of crowds to to the to the exhibitions. Um, not not sure about the early ones about uh, 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 cholera, uh, diphtheria, yeah, and, and sure. that stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was too young to know. So <laughs> so um, anyway, but but yeah, I think I think local mm -hmm. local newspapers maybe you you could find some snippets regarding uh, right. the effectiveness of the of the slogan. But it, quite interestingly, I also observed that the uh, some of the earlier slogans are uh, they are uh, all in Chinese. Um, do, do we actually find those sent sent abroad? Because that uh, would we, we would be fairly useless if you sent to to a foreign country. With yeah, I wonder. Yeah, you don't see them local mail. Yeah, on foreign mail you don't see them very much. Do you do occasionally? Yeah. But uh, like that 1967 uh, tourism one, I have a cover to um, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. To, to Jordan with that. 
But uh, in general, most of these slogans are just found on local mail. Yeah, I think it's more, and I mean more the, for local purpose rather than just to send. Yeah, out. like the cleanup campaign, you know, you, it wouldn't make oh. sense to have that sent outside. Quite right, quite right. And, oh, wow. Okay, thank you. Uh, any any questions? Uh, ask Ingo. Does anybody know why there was a gap of about 11 years when they didn't use slogans? Was there a reason mm. for it? Mm. Yeah, mm. interesting. Uh, I think it, it could have been a cost. Yeah, it yeah. could have been a cost because uh, as you know that uh, the die actually is, a, actually is a steel die, a curved steel die mm. and, yeah. and uh, you, you have to make several. So um, I think I, I've been told that because we wanted uh, we wanted one to, uh, to to celebrate our um, the centenary, uh, and the, the post, a post office said, "Oh, wow, you know, it's too expensive." And mm -hmm. we had they, you know they, they, we, we we actually talked about um, making a slogan uh, for uh, to advertise the the stamp ex well international stamp exhibition in Hong Kong in ninety four ninety seven. 2001. I mean, we really have to twist the arms just to, to, to ask them to make one because mm -hmm. the, the excuse is just very, very expensive to produce. Mm -hmm. I suppose they weren't used for very long, were they? So no, they weren't. Well, I mean, you know, some no. of them were used for what, what, 10 days. I mean, you know, the, the, yeah, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And there's, there's no yeah. more, except, except, of course, the Christmas, you know, they, they post yeah. early. I mean, they, they, they keep using them, you know, the same time. And collect your dressing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. yeah. But nowadays, of course, the, all the slogans are, are from inkjet printers, so that you know it's, it's very cheap. Yeah. You yeah. know, they, they could have any sorts of design, and they really, you know, they, they shouldn't have any excuse at all nowadays to say, look, you know, oh, you can't have it because uh, because it's too expensive. It, it virtually costs nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to do it on the computer and, and just to mm. spray it on the envelope. Anyway, it's, uh, it's uh, that, I think that they might have also quite interesting yeah. subject to talk about uh, in future. You know, about, yeah, about, you know, the, the inkjet uh, 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 slogans. Anyway, uh, if no further questions, uh, Susan, uh, I think you've got something to share with us, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Share, share screen. Yeah. yeah. And share. Slide shows on so from the beginning. Right. Mine is on road safety campaigns, which Ingo briefly touched upon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or my alternative title is the contents of Chris Riding's suitcase <laughs> that he kept under his bed. <laughs> Chris Riding was for many years the editor of the Hong Kong Study Circle Journal. Mm. And at meetings, he used to make, say that he ought to get his suitcase out from under the bed <laughs> because it contained an accumulation of covers that he collected when he was working out in Hong Kong. Yeah. And I used to say to him, you need to get it out, open it up, write up the contents, let's have a look. One day, a large box appeared, brought the post and it was absolutely jam packed full of covers and his note said that i could have them for a reasonable price provided that i wrote them up and did articles for the journal <laughs> i did quite a number on registration labels because there was a lot of registered mail but there was also many many covers with the slogans on, and these are some of Chris Riding's slogans. Two road safety campaigns, the road safety pays traffic safety campaign and the crossing safety campaign were both in use before 1997, which is my period. This is the road safety campaign, and as Ingo said, it was brought into use because of the number of accidents, because of the increasing number of vehicles. Now, I got it down as starting in 1955. And the first this first period of usage was the 14th of December, 
1955 to the 26th of January 1956. So this is a, a first day of usage of the GPO. Right. It was used at Kowloon Post Office for the same period. So again, the 14th of December was the first day of usage. And this is again, 14th of December, 1955. There was a second period of usage in 1964. And again, it was used at both GPO and Kowloon. And the 15th of November, 64 was the first day of usage. It's not very clear, but I think you can just make out that it is 64. It can't be 54. This is also the second period of usage. Now, the CPA book, Hong Kong Slogan Councils, has it as finishing in the 29th of November, but this is the 30th. So it, this does extend it by one day. This is an example from the third period of usage from Hong, uh, the Hong Kong GPO, which was in use from the 26th of October to the 6th of November, 1965. And this is an example from that third period used at Kowloon. This is the second one, crossing safety. And this was geared more to uh, pedestrians, as Ingo said, rather than at the motorists themselves. And the police campaign was pedestrians cross the road in safety. Although the campaign lasted 25 days, the slogan was only in use from the 19th to the 24th of November. Yeah. So that's six days. And that's it was only, in, yeah, it was only in use at Kowloon Central, not at the GPO. So there's an example here used on the 22nd to Jack G, which many of you will know. And there's the second one on the 23rd of November. And that brings me to the end of the display. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. The, the sender actually, uh, Mr. J, uh, he he was also a stamp collector. So yes. perhaps that's why he, he probably knew of the date, the first date of use and uh, posted. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, on that day. So, uh, well, that, that's how you get for first and last. Yes, day. yes, he was, yes, he was a big collector, Jack J. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, um, at, at one time, um, Oh, I can maybe about 10 years ago. Uh, the, actually, the post office actually advertised uh, um, uh, slogans being uh, used, and you could actually post some envelopes into a special box at the GPO, at the Kowloon Central, uh, and the IMC uh, 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 on that particular day uh, for them to be specially handled and, and cancelled with, with the slogan on, on, on the first day of use. But uh, I think no, no more nowadays. Because no, uh, no, <laughs> kind of uh, went out. It just, just not, not, it's not fashionable. <laughs> you know, and, um, much but, neglected collecting. Yeah, much slogan. neglected, much neglected. In, in fact, it, it, it's uh, but you, you do actually see a lot of them around uh, the slogans. But you know, I, 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 they, they ain't that many serious collectors of this area. Yeah. But. I mean, it's it's very hard to find, you know, to 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 find all the different dyes. Uh, oh yes, with, yeah. you try. I mean, it, it, it's almost impossible unless you you work for you know, for example, so in maybe a, a a big company like like the yes. credit card yeah. companies or something where you have thousands of letters coming in yeah. a day. You 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 never hope uh, no. to to complete the collection. No, no. I think Chris Ryder must have got the people in the office to save them for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's he's, he's in, he was in, working. in uh, public he works. Work. I mean, they, they had probably lots of letters, and yeah. and and the Jack G was in the Indian Revenue. I mean, there's probably even got more letters <laughs> coming yeah. in. Days. And they, a lot of yeah. them are registered. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, well, really just letters have a hand stamp, but, uh, you know, just ordinary yeah. mail. I think, yeah. uh, you know, Chris, Chris Riding would have a, a, a fair share of mail each day. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, yes. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Um, I think uh, 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 Harmon Fine wants to talk about something, uh, but I can't see him actually here. Adrian, Adrian has something to share. Adrian, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, very well. I'm yeah. sorry you can't see me. I can't work out why it's not working today. <laughs> um, Your camera but, not switch off? Um, no, well, it must be, but I don't know how to switch it back on. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's a video on the on the left bottom. Um, Never yeah. mind. You, you've start got to talk video. about some... I can start the video. Yeah, um, you're going to talk about some. Um... Yeah, let me get video started. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. Share screen. Right. Okay. Can you hear me still? Yes. Yes. Um. For me, this is more of a show and ask than a show and tell. Okay. Um, I'm relatively new, or returnee, to Hong Kong stamp collecting after a 40-year uh -huh. break. Um, so I've got three examples of the 1891 Jubilee, mm -hmm. all from position 12. Mm -hmm. So this stamp, as you, you guys probably know, was printed in overprinted in two rows of six so there are 12 different overprints um and i have three of position 12. this one is a pretty standard stamp for comparison the other two are confusing me somewhat yeah um so i've looked at webb and gurevich and chan so i don't know if there's some other sources that would be really good but um so this is a fairly, this is pretty standard, this one. It's an early, one of the, the early, well, there were seven printings. This is one of the earlier ones, uh, witnessed by the fact that the U in Jubilee, um, slightly short on the left, but not on the right. Um, and Webb says it doesn't shorten until the fourth printing mm. onwards. It has the most important thing to notice is probably this very flat bottomed sloping B in Jubilee that is very characteristic of position 12. The first D at the bottom of the upright where it meets um, the horizontal uh, has a nick which later becomes a break. And the second E at the top has a sloping thin um, bar which is attached at the top so that's the standard stamp for comparison um excuse me i apologize for the quality of my um pictures my scanner's broken so these are photographs yeah. um so the second stamp is a bit of an enigma. Um, the U is slightly short, and you can see it shortened on the left here as well, so it's probably a, a later printing. The B has been corrected or replaced, which Gurevich, um, in his um, Melbourne presentation, says happens in the seventh printing. Hmm. Um, the E is actually, the first E is actually properly broken through at the bottom there. And the second E, um, you can see it's slipped off the top a bit, but it's not shortened. It's sloping, but it's not shortened. And Gurevich says this shortens in the sixth printing, so I'm not quite sure if Mm. Where, where this one sits could be 
I, the only thing I think of is that the shortening is more to do with a where at the end of the letter. And if I'm someone thinking, slightly rolled, rolled the die, you'd get the full length of the letter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the combination of that B and, and the top of the E there is, doesn't quite fit the, the standard uh, texts. This third one's even more interesting. The U is actually on a tilt of about one and a half degrees there. It, and it's easy to see with the naked eye that the U is tilted left at the top. It's not something I've seen recorded anywhere. Um, there are a lot of idiosyncratic um, characteristics of the printing of these stamps that are very individual to stamp because of poor inking. But you know, this isn't about poor inking. This is, this is about having probably a slightly loose form. Um, mm. The B again is flat bottomed. Yeah. said was uh, um, a characteristic of, uh, of the seventh printing. So interestingly, I've read in some auction catalogues, January the 24th is often seen on, on seventh printing. Uh -huh. um, the first E has that complete break through the bottom, but also the top of the first, um, the top of the first D is sloping as well. Um, the second D, unlike the textbooks, the top is not sloping. Mm. It is shorter and it has dropped. You know, it doesn't quite join at the top. Yeah. Um, so it looks as if it's been repaired. Mm. So this potentially is a very late stamp. I don't know if anyone has any, has anyone seen this U before or, the, or, or this straight top of the second E? Hmm. It does, does look like it's maybe it's a different uh, type they put in. Maybe the, the one was so badly bent and they, and they decided uh, when they did this, the, the new, new printing, decided to put a new, uh, new bit in. Yeah, it looks well. It looks repaired because it's still oh, joining repaired. below the top. So yeah, yeah, it looks like that's been repaired. That sloping second E has been repaired. That 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 actually from a distance, actually it, the, the U actually uh, is quite spectacular. You know, being being offset to the one side. Yeah, oh, yeah. I haven't seen that in any of the texts. I don't know if there's any. Have you communicated with uh, Richard Gurwich? No, I haven't. No, maybe I should. Yeah, maybe you should uh, ask what he thinks. Yeah, this is. I think he has I a need. few examples of the same print. Well, I mean, he, he, he sort of wrote uh, an article. He wrote a book. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I've got his book. Yeah. Um, you got his email? No, I haven't. Okay. So, well, I can send it to you. That would be really useful. Yeah, I'll, I'll send him. These last couple of pictures. I, I think I think he, he's um, you know he, 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 he should be informed of any any new finds and because I mean he, he's been studying his stamp for years and years and years. Yeah, yeah. I was. Um, I think I, I can't I can't think of. Uh, well, well, Mick is of course uh, he, he was the expert, but uh, sadly, yeah, um, he's no longer able to comment. Uh, I think uh, Gurbich uh, has a substantial collection of these stamps. Oh, yeah, he must should, have a huge be collection. able to uh, share with you his thoughts. Yeah, that would be it's great. Thank you. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> For sure. Mail address. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. Members, well, thank you. Any comments from any members? members? No? Okay. Right. Suppose not. Uh, okay, so uh, Andrew, Andrew, yes. is Jeffrey still studying uh, Jubilee? Jeffrey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the young guy? Collector. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know, I know, I know. It's, Jeffrey, Jeff. it, yeah. yeah, especially second printing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I can see your face now. 
<laughs> yeah, I finally fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the other the other collector, uh, a long time collector, although he's not that old. I mean, he's uh, I don't know, maybe in his late fifties, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, he he's he's been collecting for for many many years, um, and and I think he bought a bit from the the Chan's collection, but he's quite. I don't know, quite clandestine. I mean, you, you don't see, he's a member of the study circle still, but uh, you don't seem to find him uh, answering your emails or, um, but he's, he's active on eBay, I know. He's, he's still alive. <laughs> but whether actually he's he's in the States or or in, in Hong Kong or in China, nobody knows. So we, 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 we I, I sent him the, the journal, you know, every time, but, uh, you know, he's, he's I think he's still around. I think he's still around. He, yeah, he specialized in the second printing, yeah, guess, you know, yeah. the second setting, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the second printing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got, he's got, he's got lots anyway. So, uh, 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 well, I don't know how to contact if anyone knows how to contact yeah, him. I, I, I'll send, I'll send you his email as well. Which I great. Have. So, so you can, you, you have the two great. Two greatest collectors, <laughs> if not the greatest <laughs> collectors of the Jubilee, which uh, I mean, and, you know, they're not even collect. They're they're not only collectors; they actually do study, so not just just accumulating stuff. So um, it would be helpful for their for their comments. Uh, right. Okay. So um, yes. Uh, let me see. Okay. So let me let me. Right. Okay. Um, maybe I can I can show a few things. Uh, okay. Uh, can you see? Right. Yeah, we see. Yes. Okay. Right. I'm going. I'm going to talk about the, the, the printed circular and newspaper rate by Brindisi. Uh, although actually this is not really <laughs> my 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 strength. Uh, you know, I think uh, this this guy called Charles Chan has 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 a, has a, has a great uh, collection of these uh, printed circular and newspaper uh, one frame uh, exhibit. Uh, you probably have seen it somewhere, but uh, you know he he's got some great stuff. Um, but you know, I just basically I I I, um, I just found a few interesting uh, clippings from the Hong Kong uh, government gazette about uh, about this uh, 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 this 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 route uh, going by Brindisi um, because uh, most of them, if you want to pay the cheap rate, the two cent rate, they, 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 most of the newspapers would have gone by the Southampton rate, Southampton Southampton route, uh, which is uh, which is much longer. Anyway, so the background of the Brindisi route, I'm sure most of you would have known, but it's just to speed up the mail, the, the British packet decided to switch the port of Brindisi to offload mail at the end of 1869. Okay, there are probably two reasons. One is, is the, is the Franco-Prussian War of, of 1870, and also with the opening of the, of the Suez Canal in, um, in 1869, uh, where the, the British actually, although the British ships actually uh, 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 did not actually pass through the British, uh, the, the Suez, used the Suez Canal, uh, but the French did. The, the, actually, the, the French mail boat actually went through the canal, and which, which actually made it faster. But the British had, the PO had a contract with the Egyptians. Then they had to offload the mail at Suez, and then the mail went by, by that time, it would be by train. To Alexandria and then sent them there, and there would be a few days delay. But you know, of course, in those days, I, 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 there was a, there was a, a, a quite a lot of competition between the British and the French. Um, uh, so so uh, I mean, you know, the British want to get the, the upper hand, therefore they decided to use the port of Brindisi. Um, well, at first, uh, the, the mail was actually through uh, 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 France. Uh, actually, uh, the, well, there were two portions of mail actually went. By Brindisi, one is a northern to the northern uh, uh, the north U north European mail, Scandinavian countries. It went up uh, by the um, the Brenner Pass uh, at, at the border between Austria and Italy. So that went straight up uh, uh, to to Berlin. You can go to Berlin. You can go to Munich from there. 
which is actually a, a, a shortcut, uh, whereas the, the, the longer routes, uh, which you have to pass uh, via uh, uh, Modain to France, uh, the French route. Um, but at that time, uh, you could only uh, go, there, there was a, there was a, 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 a railway called the, the Summit Railway, it went up to the mountain and then down again, and um, and uh, a guy called uh, Fell, you know, he built he built a special railway. And the Fell railway, you can you can Google it and find out. It's quite an interesting uh, railway for a very steep slope with three rails, and the, the, the central rail uh, being like a light break. Yeah, so um, it's quite a fascinating story of how he actually built the railway. Um, and um, and uh, that that was the red the, the, the so-called the Mount Saint East Pass as a railway was a temporary route uh, prior to completion of the Mount Saint East Tunnel uh, that was actually uh, finished at the end of 1871. So then, of course, the uh, the summit railway was closed uh, for 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 mail uh, on November. And so after the, the tunnel uh, project was completed, uh, the, the train actually went from, from Italy uh, 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 through the tunnel to, uh, to, to Modain in France. So, um, and you get, you get the mail for, for, the, for the Southern Europe and uh, uh, UK and beyond the, the USA pass through the Mount Sinai Tunnel uh, and the Northern Europe, as I say, still went through the Brenner Pass. So, um, the Government Gazette of, of the 12th August uh, 1871 notifies the reduction of newspaper price current books uh, by Brindisi to European countries. You can see that, um, that here is the, here's the page of the uh, a part of the page of the Government Gazette. Uh, it is actually uh, uh, has, a, has a reduction of the rates to some of these countries, the, the letter rate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but um, actually, uh, having said that, actually, uh, the letters are probably a bit easier. But some of the some of the destination I've never actually seen, uh, 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 like like you know, uh, you know the, 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 the fifty six cents way to Norway. You know, you just don't see these things. Maybe they do exist, but you know, it, it's a pretty scarce stuff if you, if you collect the rates. And, 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 and the printed matter as well, uh, uh, the, the newspapers and printed papers. And interesting to note that um, for newspapers, actually the price actually here, the, the tariff here actually is for one newspaper or price current, it says here, for a newspaper or price current. Whereas for packets and, uh, and uh, uh, a, a, a packet of patterns, et cetera, uh, it's actually four ounce, up to four ounces. Uh, this is, I want you to um, remember that this, because this is quite interesting development later. Okay, so uh, then there was another uh, a, a, a rate table uh, published on the 2nd of December showing the reduction of rates. Uh, so you can see that it's Italy, uh, with the, actually the span error here, but you see that it's from four cents and reduced to two cents and for pattern it, it's the same. Uh, but basically, it's a reduction of the newspaper rate that is two cents, four cents, four cents, and that was four cents, six cents, and eight cents. And that that's uh, probably got to, to do with the uh, the Italian transit charges. Anyhow, so um, to show you a, an example of it, uh, this is a market report uh, of the. Uh, well, actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, actually, it's a, you can see it's, it's, a, it's a complete printed circular. Uh, yeah, it, it's a printed circular, and you can actually see you know, that the bits there. But uh, of course, for that kind of mail, uh, you don't get a big stamp, unfortunately. You just have to, uh, if you're lucky, you get that you get the thing, and you can actually check the date when it was sent. Uh, but you. But the only thing is, you've only got a band, uh, there, there's no way you could actually check it. Uh, I think for if it's B62, it's very hard. But for S1, it's slightly better because S1 actually, the, the, the color of S1 actually varies uh, at different times. So you can actually tell approximate year of use. But this one actually is, is, is the, the four cent circular rates. You can, you can see here uh, to the German states. 
okay? And uh, vibrant DC, went vibrant DC because it's actually, it's, it's carried by the British uh, uh, at the PO packet. And it, it went through the Brenner Pass to join the German rail system to Kretfeld. Kretfeld is actually now, it's near Dusseldorf. Uh, the place where, 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 where quite very close to Essen, you know, where the exhibition will be held uh, in, in May. So, um, and then you can see a little PD mark there, um, which, which apparently uh, is, is Shanghai mark. This is actually S1 type 4. Uh, so this is quite nice. Uh, and then with a circular. So, um, so that on the 23rd of December, 1871, another rate table was published. And uh, you can see that uh, it, this is actually related to, uh, uh, to the mail uh, for, uh, for the UK mail, the UK uh, mail. So you can see that uh, vibrant DC uh, it's reduced, it's, it's 24 cents per half ounce for newspaper, it's eight cents, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I have not actually seen a newspaper uh, or circular with an eight cent rate to the UK, although it, it should be it should be there, but you know, they, they really release this kind of uh, uh, printed circular and, and news, uh, newspaper wrappers. So they, they, they really have a very, very low survival rate. rate. Uh, I've actually yet to see one. Anyway, so the later on, actually, in uh, in February in 1872, there's another post office notice um, published in the uh, Hong Kong uh, Government Gazette, uh, effective the 29th of January 1872. Now, this is quite interesting uh, because it says uh, it it is hereby notified that involved blah 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 must be prepared blah blah blah. But this this bit here to be forward a bridge packet by the DC will be six cents instead of eight cents. So there's a reduction from eight cents previously. It was it was eight cents each reduced to uh, six cents. But uh, interestingly, it says not six cents each, not exceeding four ounces in weight. Now, if you look at if you look at here, uh, actually in in the previous. Uh, 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 post office notice that before ounce in weight is actually to do with, with, the, with, the, with the book packets or, or, or patterns. So they actually do it by weight. A newsletter, they, uh, the newspaper, they usually do it per newspaper. So I just wonder why they actually started uh, to, to put in this, this clause here, not exceeding four ounce in weight. Now this, is, this is quite interesting. You see, this is clearly written here not exceeding four ounces in weight, unless this is a mistake, uh, which is possible, but quite rare to have a mistake in the, in the Hong Kong Government Gazette. But it, it, it means that they have actually somehow uh, 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 maybe changed the, the, changed the rules to say that a newspaper, if, we, if you have a, a newspaper with many sheets, uh, very heavy, you have to pay a double rate. Now, this one, you probably have, I mean, if you follow eBay, you've probably seen this uh, several times because uh, it keeps coming up uh, uh, on eBay. Uh, at first, uh, actually, I, I thought um, hey, uh, one is not dated, okay? And it, it, it's, um, although it's actually described as a, as, a, as, a, as a wrapper of some sort, which clearly you can see it on the back, it, it, it is a wrapper of some sort. Uh, but because it's undated, you don't really know whether this is actually when was it being posted. I mean, it, okay, you've got a, you've got two six cents here with a twelve cents rate. Well, it, it could have been posted uh, after the after the um, uh, uh, Hong Kong became a member of the EPU, so there was a twelve cent rate. You, know, you have a twelve cent rate there. It was posted as a letter. Um, but I, I'll tell you later why I came into a conclusion why this is this is around about eighteen seventy two. Okay, so um, if you hear, uh, if if you look at here, uh, this is the undated newspaper wrapper, right? Frankly, there, there are three possibilities. Uh, somebody suggested that uh, uh, the sender actually sent two newspapers, <laughs> therefore you pay double rate, right? One newspaper six cents, two newspapers uh, twelve cents. 
Okay. The other possibility, of course, is related to the four ounce uh, uh, weight here. It says not exceeding four ounce of weight. Maybe the sender actually sent a newspaper containing many pages, uh, which actually went over the four ounce. Therefore, he had to pay double. Uh, okay, the four ounce is about 113 grams, which is actually, okay, it sounds quite heavy, but if you think that it's a, if, if, if I send you a 36 page Hong Kong Study Circle journal, that's about four ounce. Uh, that, that's already four ounce. So it's, well, maybe it's quite possible. And um, uh, that, that, that actually it was an actually an overweight newsletter, uh, newspaper. But of course, the, 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 the final possibility is that uh, the sender actually put an extra stamp, which is, well, possible, but, um, well, a uh, bit far-fetched because the six cents was a lot of money at the time. Anyhow, so how, how do I come into conclusion that this is actually around 1872? It's because, well, there's some observation, firstly, uh, it, it, well, it, it doesn't seem to be a fake because the pair of eight cents, the pair of six cents of these is actually belongs to the wrapper. So you can see here, uh, it, it's not, uh, uh, it, it actually is properly tied to the wrapper uh, with, uh, with a S1, which appears to be an S, uh, with a type two. And, um, and, and then the thing, the interesting thing is the shade. Uh, I know it's very unfair for you to see it on the scan, uh, I think on the computer, it looks much better, but the, 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 the color of the S1 actually varies uh, 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 with, with, throughout this period of use. Um, it was actually first brought into use around 69. So that at that time, it was a very deep blue color. And then suddenly uh, between around August 69 to January 70, 1870, and then it, 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 was, it was in black. It was struck in black. And then around uh, April 70 to June 71, it, it's, a, it's a blue color. Okay. And then within this period, uh, August 71 to October 72, it has a greenish blue, like a bit like this. Okay. It's a, like a greenish blue color, uh, which, uh, which, which is quite characteristic. It's the only time where it was in that color, maybe. Uh, it, uh, the solvent problem, maybe added too much solvent or the wrong solvent in, in, into the ink and makes it turn a funny kind of greenish blue. And then it turned back to blue in, in, in 73 and then maybe added more new, uh, new, new pigment to it in turn deep blue around that time. And then in March in 77, it, it became blue black and probably it start uh, because when um, when Hong Kong joined the UPU, I think the, 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 most of the, uh, they, they used black uh, ink. Uh, so, so then after that, after uh, 1877, everything, uh, all the S1, all, all used black ink. So that, that's probably the only period, uh, where, where this was. And, and it, it's, it, it's, uh, it, it's believable because, uh, you know, you can, you can see the circular, uh, the, 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 the six cents rate actually started and around 1872. So that's, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And um, so, right. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, could you come back please on the first frame on your first cover? Oh, right, okay. This one. Uh, this one, yes. Yeah. What, what, I, what is the meaning of PD in that case? Oh, pay, pay to destination. Paid to pay to destination. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. okay. okay. Uh, there's PP okay. and PP and PD. PP is, is is part pay, and PD is paid to destination. This is this is fully paid. To destination. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate. Yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, anyway, uh, yeah, interesting, but uh, well, I mean, it's, that's not a proof. Uh, you can't prove it. Still, without without uh, without a date stamp, you can't definitely say. It's, it's 1872, uh, but even the seller actually didn't say it's 1872. The seller said it's 1871. So uh, well, it's still possible, but uh, uh, the, the seller probably uh, uh, check up the rate and, and found out. Um, but uh, this is 
I've never seen actually seen like that something like that, and 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 a double rate newspaper wrapper is is very very unusual. Um, no, that's it. So uh, okay, I'll stop sharing. Oh, because yeah. is there a similar list of colours used on Y one? Uh, yes, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Y one has a lot of interesting changes as well. Uh, and the Y one, additionally, the Y one has a deep purple, which which no other tree board has. So um, uh, I think somebody has done a study on the Y, the colors, of the variation of colors of the Y one as well. So you can actually look at the color, and then you know that it's right. Um, uh, but but I think Y one wrappers are even rarer. But okay, letters you could probably because there's a date stamp is this easy. Yeah, there is, there is. I think somebody has compiled a a a, a color a, a, a color chart. Okay, you can see color variations of the Y one as well. Um, I think uh, the B sixty two sixty two B. I think you know just people keep a keep a list of these things. All you need is uh, I think uh, maybe um, if you have a copy of the the the, the, the Gerich book, um, it, he illustrates a lot of colors. So um, that that's a good reference. For the, for, the, for the thing, but this is 1872 is quite characteristic for of the S S one of the S one, uh, the, you know the greenish uh, blue to like a wash blue color, uh, is is very characteristic of only a few months around 1872. They have this thing, right? Okay, well that that's my <laughs> that's my uh, share. Uh, okay, I stop stop sharing. Good. Right. Um, uh, I think uh, we have a slightly short meeting today um, because I think, you know, Harman, Harman's not there. But there's, there's actually an um, interesting development in um, recently. And you know that the, the wife of uh, a late uh, Mick Goldsmith, Jane, um, she wrote to me uh, a, a few days ago regarding some um, archive of um, a mix IPO. Now, mix mix actually kept a lot of information in private uh, for his studies. So um, he sent me some. Uh, he sent me some uh, ones on the, you know like the, the cancellations, etc. But I I think he also kept some for his private study. Uh, now uh, Jane I wanted to uh, to get rid of the, the material. So I don't know how many. He, I don't know how many folders you've got, but uh, I think it's only fair that if anybody wishes to take over a uh, uh, mixed uh, archive, actually to pay her postage to send it to you. I think um, if, if, uh, I've asked uh, Richard, uh, Richard said uh, that's not his area of study. So he would rather actually let other people, interesting parties to, uh, to have it. But um, I, I don't know how, how how much he has got, uh, but it, it surely is a very important uh, 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 collections of, uh, of articles or, or photographs of the, all the IPO type prints, which uh, is one of his, his pet uh, subject. So you know, if anybody uh, wishes to um, acquire the, the archive, uh, sadly, I mean, she was going to give it to me uh, because um, I, I couldn't attend a London meeting. Uh, in May, so so that that actually that didn't happen. So I said, uh, look, you know, I, I don't particularly collect IPO, although um, you know, if anybody interested, uh, you know, please contact her. Um, and 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 I think it, it, you know, it, it's it's nice if you could actually. I should probably could send it to you free, but I think it is nice to actually to pay her, to, uh, you know, for 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 posting mm -hmm. for the material. So uh, uh, Richard actually suggested to send it to, to the outline, but uh, Nick, I think <laughs> he asked you to send it to you or, or something. But uh, uh, if, if any of you are interested, can you drop me a mail, uh, email so that I could actually uh, send you an uh, email address so that you can call her phone number to contact. So I'll, I'll contact Jane. Hmm? I'll contact you? Jane. Yeah, 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 I'm interested. Yeah, I mean, otherwise she says she's going to throw it away. So yeah, um, yeah. Actually, she uh, she was going to send. She actually sent me 
several of uh, his boxes. Ooh. And she said she go, was going to pay for the postage, but actually I sent her a check I think for whatever she sent me. I, so, I think yeah. he's very she was happy. in Toronto. She was uh, in Toronto. I met her and yeah. um, one, the, one of the daughters too. Okay. When they came over for a relative's uh, yeah. wedding. Can I reply to an email that you... Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll email her. Okay. Oh, you can email her. All right. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But because you can I'll reply be... too. So, you know, so both of us could uh, contact. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hate to see it being disposed. Yeah. Disposed right. of. <laughs> so that, that's a, just a uh, really... Because... Uh, because she gave me all his way highway stuff so ah yeah 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 that's right he he kept he kept his way highway and ipo and maybe one or two other things too uh, because yeah. uh, i i've got some of the files of um uh the the earlier earlier things like um the cancels and things like that um, uh, uh, and um and he he actually, and that, that was actually before before he died, I mean, he sent it in a huge, great box uh, to my office. I mean, which weighed something like, oh, I think it's sort of thirty pounds, and all files and things like that, which, which, which I, I'm still keep. I'm it's still in my office, uh, but it is she, it's so much. She actually stuff. gave me, you know, um, when when um, she consigned it with Jeffrey. Yeah. Jeffrey made a a really thick binder. Yeah. Of literally every cover, yeah. color. Yeah. So she gave that to me. Yeah. So yeah. I have that, you know. So. Yeah. But the stuff that she's got is not only uh, the covers that he has. I mean, it's all other clippings. Yeah, I know. I know. The more yeah. than so Robson Low catalog and things. Because uh, every all, the, the, all catalogs that he, he he came across in the past. Yeah, because when I was doing my journal and studying IPO. He contributed, obviously. Yeah. So well, I'm so I'm so glad to Sam you're here, so so we can actually uh, you know talk and have actually have a, have a uh, you know proof that we have actually discussed about this topic. That uh, because I mean, if you just contact her, you know, out of the blue, and she said, oh, you know, you know, you're trying. Yeah. To, yeah. So you yeah, send her an email, and then yeah. I'll follow up. I'll do next that. week sometime. Thank, thank, thank you, Sam. I think it, 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 you know you. you the, the material will, will, will come into a, a very good uh, hand. You know, for, Thank for, you. For people, like anyway, um, anything else? Um, oh, I think I think a few of us will be um, uh, Ingo and uh, Sam and uh, you. You've been in um, Essen, right? In, in May. Yep. And and Prepcop too. Prepcop is here too. <laughs> oh right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Dr. yeah right. Okay. Uh, Welcome, Dr. Prakov. Uh, you want to say a few words? Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, all, and uh, Happy New Year, Kongi Pachoy. And uh, I think uh, many of you will be in uh, in Essen, Dr. Andrew, Sam, and uh, probably Ingo and others. It will be a big show and uh, should be a good. And I hope that uh, you will all uh, enjoy the exhibition if you uh, can make it. Nice. Uh, thank you, everyone, for sharing the interesting uh, materials and uh, knowledge. Yeah. I keep learning a lot from uh, joining the uh, the uh, discussion. Yeah. But I'm sorry that uh, I didn't uh, participate by uh, by uh, showing anything yet. Yeah. So hopefully, maybe uh, one day I'll uh, be able to join uh, and uh, show you something that uh, is a. Uh, Interesting you, can, uh, you. The park off. you can start collecting Hong Kong. Right at the moment, it's very cheap. <laughs> oh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the big buys are selling. <laughs> yes, okay. You're know, from a particular, uh, a new auction firm in Hong Kong, you know, this. <laughs> the big oh, okay. buyers are selling the stuff. Uh -huh. Anyway. That would be interesting. Uh, Thank you. Okay, if there's no, no, no further uh, items to be discussed, um, well, uh, before I bid farewell, you know, it's Sunday is actually the Chinese New Year for Rabbit, and I wish you all a happy Chinese New Year. We say Kong Hei Fat Choi to everybody, and uh, you know, have a nice, uh, a prosperous uh, and year of the rabbit, and uh, we shall see you next year, I say.
And uh, thank you very much for joining. Um, and uh, you should be uh, able, uh, I think your, your, your journal should arrive fairly soon because I, I, I posted them uh, about two days ago. So maybe, maybe next week, uh, the following week, you probably got to get your journal. And, I got uh, a telic one. <laughs> yeah, have you? You haven't got it yet. The um, Philatelic Society one, yeah, newsletter. Oh, Philatelic Society. One. Yes, I've yeah, got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the study circle one. The study circle I've also posted. No, no. Not the study circle one. No, no, no you, won't, you, won't, you, won't, you won't. Especially the mails are better now, though. Huh? The mails are better now. Yeah, yeah, in area, yeah. yeah. Is, is airmail even to South Africa now? So, so, uh, so yeah. uh, a member in the South Africa would be very happy that he, he, he's, he received, he'll receive his, his, his journal. First time in two years. There's no mail service to 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 South Africa for two years. That's, isn't that remarkable? <laughs> the longest delay, probably, uh, you know, in, in the in the history, in postal history of Hong Kong, there is a two years without any postal service to South Africa. Anyway, and nice to see you all. Uh, have a nice morning, afternoon, and evening. And uh, I'll see you next month. Uh, and uh, with another interesting topic to be discussed. Okay. okay. Say. Don't hit pa choy. Don't hit pa choy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.